Many of you know that there are official Rubik's Cube competitions that take place all around the world. But did you know there's not one, but 11 puzzles you can compete with that have been formally recognized by the World Cube Association? So that includes the classic cubic puzzles like the 2x2, 3x3, 4x4, 5x5, 6x6, and 7x7, but also the Scube, Pyramings, Square One, Megamings, and finally the Clock. Today, in my biggest unboxing yet, we're going to be opening all of these. If you're new to the world of cubing or are curious about some of these puzzles, this is the video for you. And if you enjoy it, please consider subscribing to see more stuff like this. Two quick things before I start. Firstly, huge shout out to Daily Puzzles for sponsoring this video. They are so dedicated to getting cubes into your hands quickly and without breaking the bank. So do check them out. And don't forget to use code TINGMAN at the checkout for a sweet discount. And secondly, if this is making you interested in coming to one of these mysterious cubing competitions, either as a spectator or as a competitor, just go to worldcubeassociation.org slash competitions to see this one happening near you. At the time of this video publishing, COVID-19 is understandably forcing a lot of these events to be rescheduled, but you can be sure that things will spring straight back once all this is over. You can't keep cubers down. Whew, try saying that five times. All right, let's start with the two by two. There are plenty of these out on the market, but today we're looking at the Garn 251M. Garn is often called the apple of cubing companies, and you can see why here. This cube is the most expensive two by two you can currently get, but in my opinion, also the best. It comes with a ton of extra accessories, so you can customize the cube to your exact preferences. And you're not just paying for the brand. This cube comes packed with the latest in cube tech, resulting in insanely smooth turning, very forgiving corner cutting, a ton of perfectly placed magnets, all held in an unbelievably light body. I'm not just saying this because I have to. I genuinely love this cube. I've made another video reviewing it actually, so check that out for more info. The 2x2 is by far the quickest WCA event, evidenced by its official record time. It's a great entry into the cubing world if you're not feeling confident, because the algorithms are easy to learn. I'm not a super fast solver, but I do enjoy my 2x2 sessions. For the 3x3, we have another Garn cube. This is the 356X. If the only 3x3 you've ever touched is a Rubik's brand cube, this one will feel like it came from another universe. Just like our 2x2, it also has a ton of ways to be customized and famously was the first cube with easily interchangeable magnets. Just in case you're wondering why cubes even need magnets, it's to help them align better during turns so you can perform sequences of moves more smoothly. There are cheaper versions of the 356X, for example the M, that has magnets that you can't swap out. Because Garn cubes do warp a bit while turning, some people find them a bit unstable. But personally, the X is everything you can ask for in a cube. It was my favorite for a very long time, only recently superseded by the XS. It's light, fast, and a complete joy to solve with. I've done literally thousands of solves on this cube and recommend it to anyone, if you can afford it. Next up, a 4x4 and 5x5, which I'm going to unbox side by side because they come from the same series, made by the same company, the TE Volk 4M and 5M named after Mats Volk, a Dutch speed cuber, and also twice 3x3 world record holder. Interestingly, both of these boxes are the exact same size, even though the actual 5x5 cube is obviously larger than the 4, although only by 2mm. The Volk cubes are famous for their stability, which I could immediately feel. Actually, they're pretty oily right out of the packaging, but that's because of how they're lubricated prior to shipping. A quick clean fixes it. Cubers often talk about puzzles needed to be broken in before they're turning optimally. And these are a perfect example. I honestly am not a fan of how a brand new Volk 4M feels, but I know from experience that if you give it time, it becomes really incredible. The Volk 5M is by all accounts exactly the same as the 4M, just the next size up, except for one very curious thing. It's used by pro speed cubers a lot more widely than the 4M. The first time I used a 5M, I instantly knew it was the one for me. But with the 4M, I was like, I think I need to do more comparisons first. And that's the reason right there. There are a lot of great 4x4s to choose from, but the playing field seems narrower for 5x5s. So because of that, the Volk 5M really stands out. If you can solve a 3x3, you basically know half of what you need to solve a 4x4 and a 5x5. There are a few new long algorithms to learn, which can be frustrating. But hang in there, and you'll be completing these in no time. They're really quite fun. Another thing to note is that it'll take a bit longer trying to spot pieces, because for example, there are 9 pieces on each side of 3x3, 
but 25 on each side of a 5x5. But take your time and it will start to feel more and more natural to you. Next up, the X-Man Shadow 6x6M. Yes, that's its real name. This guy is super slippery out of the box and noticeably heavier than the previous cubes. Of course, you'd expect that from a 6x6, but there are others that are quite a bit lighter. I've made another video on how to solve a 6x6 in which I also compare other 6s, which I'd honestly recommend over this one. I mean, the Shadow 6x6M was quite revolutionary when it first came out, being one of the first magnetized large cubes. But that was a few years ago, which when it comes to cubing hardware is a very long time. New products hit the shelf every month. Oh, another reason to get into the 6 is that this poor cube is often the least popular cubic event in competitions, even compared to the 7x7. And that's because of jargon warning, parodies, and needing to know the color scheme due to the lack of a constant centerpiece. But I really enjoy it, and if you give it a chance, you will too. And the final N by N puzzle, this is the Yusin Hayes 7M, named after American speed cuber Kevin Hayes, famous for his prowess with big cubes. The 7x7 is, well, really fun to mix into a checkerboard pattern, but it's also the largest cube that's officially recognized by the World Cubing Association. There are people who have longed petitioned for the 8x8 or the 9x9 to be included, but I guess a line needed to be drawn somewhere. Like the Shadow, the Haze 7M was one of the first magnetized 7x7s and was immediately the cube of choice for top speed cubers. Magnets are really important in big cubes, and it's actually mind-blowing to think about how many they had to fit in here. Unlike their smaller counterparts, large cubes are much less forgiving with turning. You need to accurately line the slices up just right for each turn, or you risk the cube popping. That is, individual pieces getting sprung out of place. It's tricky, but you get used to it. Also, if you haven't already noticed, as the cube size increases, the disparity between the times you might get and those of top speed cubers will also exponentially increase, so don't stress about it. For example, my best 3x3 time is 6 seconds slower than the world record, but my best 7x7 time is more than 5 minutes slower than the world's best. But who cares? When you solve one of these bad boys, you feel like such a boss. And that's what it's all about. I think. On to the unconventional puzzles! These are not what you think of when you hear Rubik's Cube, but nonetheless, they're regarded as official events in WCA competitions. We start with the Moyu Aoyan Magnetics Cube in this gorgeous box with gold lettering. This guy comes with center replacements, and you'll see why in a second. The Scube is so aptly named. It's a cube, but totally a skew. Layers rotate, seemingly impossibly, on four axes. Yet despite its crazy symmetry, it's surprisingly easy to learn to solve. The Aoyan is unique in that you can install centers with a circular depression in them. Highly useful, because that's typically where you place your thumb and fingertips when turning this cube. This is my daughter's skew of choice, and I must say I don't mind it either. It's a fun puzzle in anyone's collection. Next is a four-sided puzzle aptly named the Pyraminx. This one is very much a budget variant, the YJ Yulong V2M, but it stands up to the competition. Magnets are noticeable, and it's got these inner grooves that I'm assuming make turning smoother. Even if it doesn't, it looks pretty cool. The Pyraminx can be turned in a few ways, including rotating just the tips, which adds to the scrambled look, but doesn't actually mess the puzzle up in a meaningful way. Too many, it's in the same category as the 2x2 and the Scoob, in terms of being a puzzle that can be solved very quickly. Indeed, these are the only three puzzles for which the official world record single is under one second. Crazy. Next in line is the X-Men Vault Square 1. This guy doesn't come with much else in the box, but is very much the choice of most Square 1 solvers. It also often comes with a black face instead of white in traditional color schemes. Originally known as Back to Square 1, this is the only WCA puzzle that can shapeshift. That is, it can be scrambled into a totally different shape from its solved state of a cube. Its bottom and top layers are the same, but the center layer, or equator, can only be turned along one edge, which is what adds to the complexity of the puzzle. Solving the square one is... Well, I can't say because I haven't actually learned how to solve one yet. Okay, well, I'm actually in the process of learning, so keep an eye on future videos for that. Two puzzles to go! This one has to be the most geometrically interesting puzzle, because it is a dodecahedron, or a 12-sided polyhedron. Yes, this is the Megaminx, the Gan Megaminx to be precise. As you may remember from unboxing the Gan 2x2 and 3x3, this guy comes with all sorts of customization options as well, and rightly so, because it's priced at a premium. 
There are cheaper Mega Mixes, of course, but you do get what you pay for. In my opinion, nothing comes close to this one. The Gun Mega Minx is ridiculously light, with strong magnets, smooth and stable turning, incredible corner cutting, and is an absolute joy to solve. I've actually made a whole other video reviewing it, and my opinion has not changed one bit. Despite being completely geometrically different, the way you solve a Mega Minx is surprisingly similar to a 3x3. You go side by side, getting edges in place, then corners, and basically repeat until you reach the final layer. This is the part where you'll want to learn some algorithms, because it's not totally intuitive. This was actually the most recent puzzle I learned to solve, and I wish I didn't put it off for so long, because it's so much fun. If you haven't tried the Mega Minx before, what are you waiting for? And finally, by far the most unusual puzzle in the WCA lineup, the Rubik's Clock, or as most simply say, the clock. This one's called the Ling Ao Magic Clock Puzzle, and seems to have its own anime mascot. The way to solve the clock is pretty simple, in principle. Use the four buttons and four wheels along the edge to simultaneously set all the dials to the 12 o'clock position on both sides. But as interesting as it sounds, it's also by far the least popular WCA event and many cubers, including myself, do not know how to solve it. Now that I own one though, I hope to be able to say something different in a few months. Or maybe years. And that brings us to the end of, wait, what's this? Two more puzzles! Yes, my friends, as a final bonus round, I'm going to unbox two more 3x3s, because why not? First up is the T Thunderclap in a very unconventional box. It may not come with much, but the Thunderclap, in my opinion, is one of the best budget 3x3s out there. It's magnetic, really nice to turn, and has a really cool clicky sound that I personally quite like. At its price, it's pretty hard to beat. And, in what I've just realized is the only sticker puzzle in my entire unboxing, we have the Dian Guhong V3M. This is another budget magnetic 3x3 with one important difference. At 54mm in length, it is a whopping 2mm smaller than traditional 3x3 cubes, which, no kidding, is enough to literally feel like a significantly smaller cube. I know a few cubers who use this for one-handed solving because it's easier to hold. Out of the box, I don't find that it turns very quickly, but as usual, with some lube and breaking in, that's easy to change. All up, it's a really nice pint-sized 3x3, which I'm happy to chuck into my bag and take around with me. And ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of this massive unboxing of one of each of the official WCA puzzles in 2020. Remember to check out Daily Puzzles, a proud sponsor of this video, and use the Tingman discount code. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I do hope this inspires you in some way to try out puzzles that you haven't before, or even maybe take that first step into the perplexing and amazing world that is queuing. Please take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time.